depression can make your heart ache, and depression can give you a heart attack. That was Lawson Wilson, professor of psychiatry at University of Cincinnati, who is my guest today on ShrinkPod. From the campus of New York Medical College and the Behavioral Health Center at Westchester Medical Center in Valhalla, New York, I'm Dr. Michael Blumenfield, professor of psychiatry, and this is ShrinkPod. This podcast will bring to you information, commentary, and interviews with experts on topics in mental health and psychiatry. You can subscribe to receive this podcast on a regular basis, and your comments and suggestions are always welcome. My email address is shrinkpod at AOL.com. And now for today's program. My guest today is Dr. Lawson Wilson, who is a professor of psychiatry and family medicine at the University of Cincinnati, where he's been teaching for the last 20 years, and his subspecialty is the area of psychosomatic medicine uh, and primary care psychiatry. Welcome to Shrinkpod, Dr. Wilson. Thank you, Dr. Bloom. Uh, Today we're going to talk about uh, your new book uh, titled uh, Treating the Aching Heart, published by Vanderbilt University Press, uh, A Guide to Depression, Stress, and Heart Disease. Uh, What what made you decide to uh, write this book, Dr. Lawson? I think it's the best mind-body story that we have, and it's certainly the best story that psychosomatic medicine has to tell, because we know more about depression as a mental illness and heart disease as a physical illness than we do about any two other mental and physical illnesses that are connected. And the connection between the two um, has fascinating physiological uh, dimensions, and it is a very important public health problem that most people don't know about. Do you actually feel that depression can cause heart disease? Well, that depends on how you uh, understand the word cause. It'd be simplistic to say that any one thing can cause heart disease. You know, certainly hypertension by itself doesn't, smoking by itself doesn't, and depression by itself couldn't cause heart disease. But I firmly believe that depression is a major contributing factor to the development of heart disease in people who have significant depression over an extended period of time. Therefore, by extension then, uh, depression is a significant factor in people who have heart attacks, correct? Yes. Okay. Well, uh, what about some of the mechanisms which depression might contribute to someone having heart disease or having a heart attack? I think the first um, mechanism to understand is a behavioral one. There is also a biological one. And the behavioral mechanism has to do with the behaviors, the high-risk behaviors that depression fosters um, that lead to heart disease. And there are four of them, uh, really, that contribute to major risk factors for heart disease. And the first is physical inactivity. Uh, Depressed people tend to exercise less often, and this tendency towards physical inactivity contributes to heart disease. The second is obesity. Depressed people have higher rates of obesity, particularly through binge eating. And that, um, as you know, also increases the likelihood for developing heart disease. Smoking is much higher in depressed people, uh, higher in frequency, and it is harder for depressed people to quit smoking. Smokers also have higher rates of depression. And then finally, the link between depression and diabetes. Uh, Eating habits and physical inactivity habits um, of the depressed people lead to their having higher rates of developing diabetes and higher rates of complications once they develop diabetes. So those four risk factors are tightly linked to the behaviors associated with depression. So in this case, you would be saying that if someone can stop smoking and, uh, and if someone could exercise more uh, and get their diabetes under control, they'd be less likely to have heart disease even if they were still depressed. That's right. Uh, but, but again, you're also saying that depression uh, leads to diabetes and leads to uh, smoking and leads to obesity. Right, and Could, so it is much harder to prevent um, these risk factors for heart disease from contributing to the onset of heart disease if you're depressed. Okay, let's look at that, because I think some of our uh, audience might not appreciate how 
uh, depression, for example, can lead to diabetes because I think the general thinking is, uh, well, I understand what you're saying. I think the general thinking often is that uh, people are born with a genetic predisposition to diabetes. You know, your parents have diabetes. It runs in the family. Uh, you, you tend to have it. And now you're saying that, uh, uh, that uh, if you're depressed, you're, you're more likely to get diabetes. Maybe you should explain how that works. Yeah, well, it goes several ways. One is we have an obesity epidemic happening in this country, which means that people who are not genetically predisposed to developing diabetes but do get uh, overweight develop a higher risk for, um, for, for contracting diabetes. And depression just accelerates that whole process. The other interesting fact about the biology of depression is that it makes it harder for people to control their glucose. And uh, people with um, various kinds of uh, biologically driven depressions actually have higher um, glucose uh, levels and have harder time actually controlling their glucose and bringing their glucose down over time, and that puts them at greater risk for developing diabetes. Are, are you saying if that latter group, if they actually took care of their depression, their glucose would be uh, better regulated? It would be better. It'd be easier for them to regulate not only the, their glucose levels, but also a lot of the habits that tend to make people develop diabetes, such as overeating, cravings for sweets, um, insomnia, ex uh, lack of exercise, that sort of Okay, well, let's say we have someone who's, uh, who says, well, look, I don't smoke, I don't have diabetes, uh, I'm not obese, uh, I exercise a lot. Um, does that matter if, um, if they're depressed? Is there, is there, if, if in addition to that they happen to be depressed, are you saying that they're going to be more likely to get heart disease even if they don't have those other risk factors that we just discussed? No, and th that's the good news. I think depression by itself um, is unlikely to lead to heart disease. It's depression that persists long enough to contribute to some of these other um, risk factors for heart disease. So depression in concert with some of these other risk factors can accelerate the whole process of developing heart disease. But most people with depression alone who are doing lots of the other prevention, preventive um, measures have a relatively little chance of developing heart disease. Okay, l l let me put on my psychosomatic hat since we're we're both psychiatrist colleagues and yeah. um, and, uh, and 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 sort of discuss that maybe even uh, uh, try to debate that point a little bit. What what about the fact that um, research has shown that a heart rate variability uh, the in other words, let me explain. You know what I mean, of course. But um, that uh, people normally, uh, when they uh, get excited, uh, either emotionally or physically, their heart rate speeds up, and that's good for the heart. If you don't have that change in in your heart rate, that's uh, usually associated with heart problems. And apparently, depressed people don't have uh, good heart rate variability. Uh, were you are you familiar with that? And, uh, exactly. Oh yeah. Okay. So so uh, under that uh, with that piece of research, it would suggest that this there may be some connections that go beyond just the factors that you mentioned. Exactly. So now we're moving from the behavioral pathway to the biological pathway. Okay. And one of the most fascinating uh, dimensions of depression that you're alluding to is that depression uh, disrupts the whole autonomic nervous system. Uh, which is in control of the automatic things like heart rate and blood pressure that we're usually oblivious to. And so one of the consequences of distress and an overactive stress response system um, that happens in the context of chronic depression is that the body's ability to automatically regulate heart rate and the variability of heart rate um, gets disrupted as the conductor is not conducting the symphony in harmony. And so the heart rate can um, suddenly get out of whack and doesn't self-regulate as well. And that often accounts for the vulnerability to sudden death, particularly in the vulnerable months after a heart attack. 